Hey, we are in Luke chapter 8, today verses 40 through 56. There's a lot going on, kind of a busy situation here, but let's take a peek. Now when Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. Then a man named Jairus, a ruler of the synagogue, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house because his only daughter, a girl of about twelve, was dying. As Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for twelve years, but no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak, and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me. I know that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. While Jesus was still speaking, someone came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead, he said. Don't bother the teacher anymore. Hearing this, Jesus said to Jairus, Don't be afraid, just believe, and she will be healed. When he arrived at the house of Jairus, he did not let anyone go in with him except Peter, John, and James, and the child's father and mother. Meanwhile, all the people were wailing and mourning for her. Stop wailing, Jesus said. She is not dead, but asleep. They laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But he took her by the hand and said, My child, get up. Her spirit returned, and at once she stood up. Then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were astonished, but he ordered them not to tell anyone what had happened. So, again, this is a chaotic scene. Jesus has just come from the, uh, you know, the, the uh, delivering of the man with the legion of demons. The word about him is beginning to spread. People are crowding around him. Uh, Jarius was a, you know, a high-ranking person, a ruler of the synagogue. And so Jesus wanted to be sure to take care of his need. But while all the people are crowding around him and touching him, that's when this woman uh, that is bleeding, she's been bleeding for 12 years. Um, interesting that the child is 12 and she's been bleeding for 12 years. Not sure if there's any significance with that. Uh, if you think there is, write it in the comments below. Uh, so even with all of this crowd pressing in, this girl is sick and she's dying. And even with all of that, when the woman touches Jesus to receive healing, you know, she touched him in faith that, that there was power for healing in Jesus. And so there were lots of people who bumped into Jesus and made physical contact with Jesus, but she touched him. Uh, seeking healing, and he realized, you know, like, hey, somebody got healed here. What just happened? And he wants to get to the bottom of it, and everybody's like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. And she's, you know, uh, it's a little bit of an embarrassing situation. It had clean, unclean ramifications in the culture, and so she's not wanting to say anything, but Jesus won't let it go, so she has to acknowledge, hey, yeah, it was me. Here's my issue. been bleeding for 12 years. Um, I wasn't getting healed, but now I'm healed. And so then uh, in verse 48, he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. So what healed her? Your faith has healed you. What does that mean? Uh, it doesn't mean that her faith without Jesus healed her, just faith, but that she really believed that Jesus could do this. So she pushed through and she went and got her miracle, her faith in Jesus, her faith in the healing power of God through Christ is what brought that healing. And so he tells her to go in peace. You're not in trouble. It's all good. Now, the situation was time sensitive. Obviously, Jesus doesn't get there before the girl dies, Jairus' daughter. She dies. And so that's just a terrible thing. Uh, it must have been heartbreaking for them. You know, don't bother the teacher anymore. Your daughter is dead. What a what a heartbreak. What a just a you know that that feeling of oh. And they must have thought we didn't get there soon enough. 
and Jesus is taking this time for these other people. And, you know, they must have been heartbroken that their daughter died. Um, but then, just like with Lazarus, very similar to the story of Lazarus, Jesus knows this isn't the end of the story. And so he says, look, you know, uh, she's not dead but asleep, a strange way of saying uh, this is going to work out okay. And then he raises her from the dead, uh, tells them to get her some food, and it's not the end of the story for Jarius' daughter. Uh, and so it turns out to be a beautiful moment. The thing I want to look at from here, you know, obviously there's the power of God being demonstrated in the healing of the woman, uh, the raising of the girl, and I'm just amazed that Jesus takes the time in the middle of it to deal with this woman. You know, there's all these people pressing on him, and he's like, yeah, you know what, we're going to just stop here for a little bit, and somebody touched me, and he takes time for her, and I feel like in our lives we can be super busy, there can be so much going on, and I want us to trust God to take time for the one, you know, that, that individual that needs a little extra attention, you know, like there's that moment where you can say something, you can stop what you're doing, and you can uh, be kind. That's what Jesus did here. I want to pray that today we would look for those moments where maybe in our busy schedule we need to just realize, oh, don't want to miss this God moment. And then we go and, and grab hold of that and then get back to our thing, realizing that God can take care of it, even if it's time sensitive like this sick girl. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Help us to be able to see those moments and not get too busy to notice the God moments that can happen. Help us to take time for the one like you did, the crowds pressing in against you, and, and you're going to a sick little girl's house, and she's very, very sick and dying, but you stopped, you dealt with this woman, she received healing, you encouraged her. Lord, that's amazing. Help us to have that same heart, not to... Uh, get too caught up in our busy schedules, but to really see the God moment and grab hold of it and not miss it. So Lord, guide us with that. In Jesus' name, amen.